we're recording. All right, I always wanted. First of all, you were way too close to me, man. Move back. Move hey, back. Gotta stay. <laughs> gotta stay in the frame, man. <laughs> I always wanted to say this. We're 16 by nine, but it ain't that big. So. Oh, man. I always wanted to say this. Hold on, you ready? So who are you? Uh, who I'm Andy. Question? I'm Andy Grignot. <laughs> 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 Who's the uh, filmer of this uh, Not video? Nearly crazy He's one of the 12 guys this. who built the iPhone. I mean, come on, that's a, that's a pretty uh, big honor to have you. I just have met this guy. He's, he's, he's awesome. I want to talk about you a little bit. All right. Who so I'm you? Robert Scovel, and I work at Rackspace, and I uh, study the future for Rackspace. I go around and interview tech executives just like you do. Well, I'm more like, do just like you do, but okay. All right. Anyway, <laughs> um, I, I actually want to ask you, on the marketing side, why does Rackspace pay you to do this stuff? Seriously. Why? What's, what's in it for why? them? Uh, Oh, well, that's a deeper question. <laughs> no, like, just on a marketing Why side. Why does Red Bull sell $2 billion a year of the crappiest product the world has ever seen? It's sugar water with caffeine in it, right? There's nothing redeeming about Red Bull, but they sell $2 billion a year because they put Red Bull's brand on gods in our society. And I'm just going and putting Rack Rackspace's brand on gods in our society. That, so that's one thing. Two is strategy. If I, if you're on Amazon, I ask you why why the fuck are you why the fuck are you on Amazon, Andy Greg Don? <laughs> this company's on Amazon, and they'll tell me, well, you don't have this API, or performance isn't good enough, or it was too expensive, or what you know, or just cause, which is usually the answer. Um, well, th that helps uh, Rackspace uh, react to the marketplace. It's strategy that uh, turns into strategy conversations with people who make the, the cloud. Uh, third thing is relationships. People like to buy things from people they know. You know, I like to. If I ever buy a Ford, I'm going to buy it from Scott Monty, right? Because uh, he's the only guy at Ford I really know. I mean, I know the CTO and everything, but he's one of the public faces of Ford, and he had, he added a human dimension to that company. So that's another piece, and it goes on. This is, the reason I'm asking this is because you know this is I feel like a new trend in marketing, kind of like yeah. thought leadership and uh, you know providing value as opposed to just talking about yourself all day long. And yeah. Not enough companies are doing it, but obviously Rackspace is leading the way, and I'm, I'm trying to do that in Israel with some startups. And uh, I think it's, it's hard because most people don't think about it. Most people don't think about why Red Bull sold two billion dollars a, a year of a crappy product, right. and how did they do that? They did it very deliberately. By the way, if you work at Red Bull, you're not allowed to wear the Red Bull brand. That's awesome. That because they're awesome. very disciplined about hacking Andy Grignan's brain to make Andy go, oh, I'll have a Red it's, Bull and But vodka. subtly, not not in your face, aggressive marketing. Subtle. Right. It's all about subtlety, which is interesting, by the way. Just so you know, just an interesting uh, kind of tidbit. The word subtlety does not exist in Hebrew, which makes all the sense in the world. Because if you know Israeli culture, like subtlety is the last thing that you can say about an Israeli. But marketing is all about subtlety, so that's really interesting. All right, one more question. You always talk about the, the spooky line. Is that how you call it? The freaky line. The freaky line. The freaky line. Like you know how tech is is, is crossing the freaky line and getting We're, really. So I want to know where is Scoble? I mean, you take pictures of yourself in the shower. So what is your freaky line? What is too far? I'm not getting naked with Andy Grignard. That, that's what. I, <laughs> that's my freaky life. Um, In terms I don't of tech, know. You know. I mean, uh, uh, we are heading into an always surveilled world. Uh, these things are studying me full time, right? Show me your hold on. Yeah, just an iPhone or a, or a Moto X or a Google Glass. They're studying us full time. It, that thing knows that it's in my pocket based on the sensor readings that it's giving off. There's a company called Sensor. Uh, I forgot the company name now, but anyway, I just interviewed them. But they built software that goes around the sensors and can tell whether it's in your pocket, in your hand, whether you're walking, running, skiing, driving. You add that on the data from Google Calendar, it can tell we're in a meeting or an interview or a, you know, a lunch date. Boom! All of a sudden, this so what's world. What's too freaky goes, for you? What's too freaky? Where, where, uh, where, are we, where should we not go? I, in terms of tech. I. The bedroom. You leave it at that. I mean, yeah, but my wife wears her Fitbit to bed. I mean, come on, you know, get a little, a few extra steps in there. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of your wife. So I'm not even gonna go there. Right, <laughs> Gotta get a few extra steps. No, seriously, I, uh, it's about studying your sleep pattern now, right? And that's so the freaky line is no, doing, yeah, yeah, doing something or sharing data with the public that I don't expect. Uh, Trapster, I just wrote about, was putting blue lines of where I walked. And I don't mind that so much for me, but I think that's really dangerous for a general population to be tracked in public that way because all of a sudden bad things can happen. You're posting your phone number on Twitter all the time, so you clearly don't care very much about privacy. But well, the phone number is, you know, what, what are you going to call and crank call my phone? I mean, 
I've had it on my on the internet for eight years. People are scared of this stuff, but I, I hear what you're saying. But there's a lot of fear that is not yeah. rational. I mean, I, I'm more scared that a drunk driver is going to kill me on the way home tonight, right? 30,000 people die, well, 20 something thousand people die a year in the United States in cars. Yeah, we all drive cars. Right. We all take that risk. And it's not what you same. get, you know, it's the exchange of what you're getting for it. As long as you have utility, right. you're going to give up your privacy. Right. If you want to use Uber to get a taxi, a uh, ride home, you got to give it your credit card. Right? I don't move in San Francisco without Uber. All right, one last question, then we're really done. Yeah. Israel, you're coming to Israel soon. Oh, yeah, man. Wearable, wearable yeah. conference. Right? Yeah, yeah. What, what are your thoughts about Israel? I don't know, you know. What do you think of that place? No, it's a. Uh, if you look at all the really interesting hard tech companies, whether it's uh, Prime Sense that got sold to uh, Apple last year, or Tap and Go, which is one of my favorite new companies, um, Waze. Waze. Yeah, I know you're a fan. yeah, but Waze, you know, that, Waze's been hot for six years. You know? <laughs> but uh, oh, no, Waze no. went to Google. If you look at these higher tech, really interesting companies, generally they're either coming out of San Francisco or Tel Aviv, and. Um, Enough and, said. That's it. And that's why I'm going to Tel Aviv in May. My iPhone uh, storage is about to run out, so thank you very much. Go, appreciate Thanks. it. It's fun. Thanks very much, dude. Thanks.